Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the Prophet teaches. We are talking about the Muslim position in trials and tribulation in pursuit of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And before having the break, we talked about the way of survival from the trials and tribulation. And I would like to emphasize the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, people at the time of trials and tribulation, they may sell their religion easily. They may fall a prey to the shaitan and to the Satan by committing sins without realizing that. And it is reported that there is a story about a, a person who worked as an imam in UK. And this man used actually to take the bus every morning to the Islamic center, return back. One day, he paid the fees for the bus and the driver gave him extra change. So the man looked at his pocket and he found that there is something extra. So he waited and he was hesitant whether to return it back or to keep it something which is worthless. Few pennies or cents are worthless in this case. Anyhow, he decided to return even the pennies to the driver. And before dropping from the bus, he gave the driver the pennies. And the bus driver said to him, you are the new imam in our location? He said, yes. He said, I was actually going to visit your Islamic center and I was waiting to know you and to just introduce me to you. And then the man looked at the change as if he is pointing to him that he wanted to test the Muslims in their honesty. When the imam dropped from the bus, his feet could not carry him and he was going to fall on his knees and he said walk to me i was going to sell islam for just a few cents if i didn't pay the change back to the bus driver he would have an impression about muslims that they are unhonest people this is a situation which is repeated and this is a question which is asked to me, myself, and to everybody watching me right now. How many times did you sell Islam? How many times did you sell your religion for just worthless vanity of this life? How many times that you neglected your prayers? How many times that you give preference to the vanities, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is a sign of trials and tribulation. Brothers and sisters, there is a solution for that. The best solution is to jump into making the good deeds. It's reported that there is a man, his name is Afif ibn Amr. This man, he was a friend of Al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet Wasallam. He visited Al-Abbas. One day he was in Mina. And when the sun declined, he witnessed that there was a man who got up and made prayers. And afterwards, a woman followed him. And another child or a young man came up and he made prayers also. So he asked Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, who are those people? He said to him, this is Ali ibn Abi Talib. This is a cousin and this is a wife of Muhammad. They believe that he is a prophet and messenger. The man turned his face away from the Prophet ﷺ for just a blink of an eye. How much did it cost him? It costed him actually more than 20 years because he accepted Islam after 20 years in the year of delegations. And then he came to the Prophet and said, Wow to me, had I accepted Islam on the day I saw the messenger and his cousin and his wife making prayers, I would be one of the four people accepting Islam on the face of the earth. Whenever a good deed is given to you, snatch it, get it, jump into taking it because it may save you from a lot of trials and tribulations. The solutions are the keys of getting grip of the trials and tribulations in our daily life. I would like actually to elaborate them briefly because we have a lot of questions to answer inshallah. First of all, 
a person whenever is given an opportunity to make any good deed, don't delay it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preferred actually a believer to compete and to contest on only one thing which is making good deeds. Allah said in the Quran, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ Hasten to the forgiveness of your Lord and to gardens of paradise which are as spacious as the heavens and the earth. So this is very important. Number two, a person must uphold to the Quran and the Sunnah. In every single act and deed, this is the safest way that keeps you away from the shaitan and its ways. Number three, do not put yourself in positions of doubt and suspicion or at places which may actually make fitna for you. For example, if a person, his weak point is women, so let him not mingle with women. If a person, his weak point lies in money, so he is not actually being involved in trusts and amanat. If a person is actually weak when he watches the movies or the TV, or it may lead him to arousal of his desires, so he gets rid of all the spots and regions where actually it makes attraction or seduction for him in his religion. A person who may be actually tested by his position, he may avoid it because he needs actually clearance in his religion. Number four, a person keeps good companionship because a friend is a very support and a good supportive means of a person of saving him from the atrocities of this life and the trials and tribulations. Number five, also seeking Allah's help and refuge in your prayers, in your sujood, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save you from the fitan as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa did. The ways of keeping you stable on the straight path out of the trials and tribulations is standing in the depth of the night, qiyamul layl, making prayers in the depth of the night. Because the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said to his wives, ayqidhu sawahib al hujar wake up the people, the owners of the champers, the dwellers of the champers. And the Prophet ﷺ invited them and said, wake up to make prayers in the depths of the night because Allah is the only one who knows how much trials and tribulations fell on the earth at that night. Also, there is a very important key that the Messenger ﷺ mentioned in his authentic hadith reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim from a long hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said, فَمَنْ أَحَبَّ أَنْ يُزَحْزَحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَيَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever would like to be shaked out, removed away from the hellfire, and be admitted to the Jannah, let him not die until he is a believer. And number two, he treats people in the way that he likes to be treated. This is the ideal way. If you don't like people to talk badly about you, so you don't talk badly about others. If you want people to approach you in a decent and gentle way, so you have actually to approach them in the same way that you like to be treated. If you don't like people to take your money or your wealth, so you must treat them in the normal, ideal way. This is a way of survival because Allah said in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةٍ أَتَصْبِرُونَ وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ بَصِيرًا And we made each one of you a source of test and trial for each body. When you drive, when you walk and talk, when you meet, when you have a conversation with any person, he is a source of trial and tribulation for you. So it is very important that you be aware and alert most of the time. These are some of the keys that the Prophet ﷺ talked about in his sunnah of establishing and stabilizing our feet firmly on the straight path away of the trials and tribulation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us and to provide us with a shield against all the trials in this life and the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our deeds and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon his soul The greatest of prophets Islam was his only goal 